So you finally make enough money over on Twitch. You've been, say you've been streaming for a while now and you're finally able to get that Twitch payout. Or maybe someone just comes in and gives you a hundred bucks. Either the case, you decide that you need to get a webcam if you don't have one already and or upgrade your current one. Maybe to like the C920 or like the one that I'm using, which is the Logitech C922. Both really great cameras. So you get it in the mail a few days, maybe you orbit it on amazon.com and then uh, you get it in the mail, you rip it open, set it up in OBS, and then you get something that looks like this. Not exactly what you were expecting, right? Hello everybody, welcome back to the Blue Raspberry Network. My name is Nolan, also known as Wicked Over there on Twitch. Uh, today, we're gonna teach you how to take your webcam to the next level. So like I mentioned before, as soon as you hook it up, the, the C920 or the C922 just doesn't look that great. Especially, there's some, I'll give you some little helpful tips and tricks that you can use that will make your webcam really stand out and actually look like a more expensive camera, like a DSLR camera, for example, what we're shooting on right now. Now this camera is the Canon SL2. And I technically could use this for a webcam because I do have a cam link somewhere. I don't know what happened to it. <laughs> I could use this and then just spend like 20 bucks, get the Canon dummy battery, but I just don't want to do that right now. I used to use, or I tried using this guy for a while. Now this is the Sony HX80. And, to, and the whole reason why I started using this point and shoot was because it does do the 1080p at 60 frames per second like I wanted. However, what I find very interesting is my Logitech camera actually looks better than this thing. And this is way more expensive. So it goes to show you that you don't need to shell out a crap ton of money to make your things look better. I'm gonna show you some little bit of tips and tricks that you can use to make your webcam look so much better and give you some pointers on what to do about lighting. 99.9% .9 of the time, whenever people uh, get a camera, they seem to think that, oh, it's only a hundred bucks and they plug it in and it does look like crap. And they look at it and they're like, well, I need to spend $5,000 like Harris Heller if I wanna get the best quality you possibly can. Now, by all means, if you have five grand laying around and you have no idea what to use with it, then sure, go ahead and go buy one of those bad boys. But if you're like me and you really don't have a lot of money and you still want to make content, you need to kind of think outside the box. With the C920 and the C922, they're great cameras, but they have really small sensors, so they don't allow a lot of light into them. So the best thing for the C920 or C922 is you need to add light. As you can see right behind me, I have this little ring light back here and that ring light was only, I think, $15 on Amazon. Now, I was using a green screen at the time whenever I got both of these, but now that I'm not, I'm just using a background, I only need the one. So I'm gonna help you guys out. So let's jump over to the streaming setup and uh, we'll show you what we should do. Hello guys, welcome to the streaming setup. This is kind of what you get as soon as you plug in your uh, C922 or your C920 Logitech webcam. And as you could tell, this is 30 frames per second, I guess. May I don't think it actually is, but because it's, way too blurry and i don't like that at all especially if you have 60p gameplay footage in the background this just looks sloppy so just slapping this in and doing absolutely this and then here you go now if this is kind of what you're shooting for which i don't know why you would be but i honestly don't recommend it like what i honestly think you should do is actually do these nice little settings here and that i will be showing you in just a second all right so this is my normally my main game page or game that you see but as you can tell that you just saw right there that um the camera did decide to try to auto focus it went out of focus and went back in now that's one thing that you do want to address because it just looks way too sloppy in my opinion whenever that happens. So here's some a couple of, of tips and tricks that you should do that I think will help a lot of people out and make get the most out of their $100 camera. So what we're gonna do is I'm going to zoom out real quick. So just give me a second. And I'm gonna show you a couple of settings. Is And uh, don't worry about this because this is not how I normally have it set up, but okay. So here we are in uh, OBS, as you can tell, like normal. And don't worry, I just, I don't normally have this up. So that's why it looks the way it does. Um, got a little bit of a videoception thing going on, as you can tell. But what we're going to do is I am going to go into uh, the webcam settings, which I just got to find it. Here it is. You right click on this bad boy, and then you can go to properties. Now, this is kind of where the magic is going to happen is in this little window right here. So what we're going to do 
is, as you can tell, is I have it at 1080p, highest frames possible, which is the 30, any format, full color range, because I do want to get as most colors as possible. But before, I'm kind of jumping the gun a little bit, before we get into this step, let's do step number one. Now you see, actually, just from the light coming from my, uh, my, my setup here, it's actually doing a pretty good job. But, and then turning off that overhead light, but I definitely recommend you use a ring light of some sort. You know, you can get them really cheap on Amazon, like I said, link in the description below on the exact ones that I'm using. And I actually have mine set up because it's actually used for like cell phones. And I'm actually using one of the, the arm that's supposed to be used for a cell phone instead of my monitor to get a little bit of a different angle. This is okay, you know, this looks good, but I'm gonna show you the nice little settings that you can use that are actually gonna take the webcam actually to the next level. Now you can also do like I do, I'm using the Philips Hue. You don't exactly have to use a Philips Hue. You can find, again, some really great inexpensive lights, uh, colored lights, and I definitely recommend using a colored light in your background just because it, it's more aesthetically appealing to me um, personally because I'm one of the reasons why there's RGB on everything. I'm not gonna lie. But yeah, so um, I'm gonna show you a couple of tips and tricks for settings on this webcam to make it even better what you're going to want to do is you want to go to uh, configure video and of course it opens up on my second monitor and these are the settings that you're going to want to do these are the default settings now i like to turn off white balance just because it gives me more color and i like the more color so i turn off auto white balance and i just leave it the way it is because i again i like the more color now, if you were to keep that on, I mean, that's fine, but I like to keep, take it off just because it gives it a little bit more color in the background. I like to bump up the sharpness just a tad, not a lot, especially on these cameras. And then I do like to uh, put in a little bit of oversaturation about the 151 mark. The next section that I like to uh, use is I turn off autofocus. Now you can adjust this to whatever focus that you're needing, but right here at the default, it doesn't need to be focused because I'm in focused, you can see me, it's fine. Next, I like to turn this off. The low light uh, compensation, that's clicked on, so it's gonna make the most amount of light go into the camera as much as possible. If I'm not mistaken, I could be wrong, whatever. But I like to turn this off. Now, this is where you're gonna get, see, you can already see a night and day difference. This is true 30, if I'm not mistaken. This looks so much better than it did just a second ago with that, uh, the low light compensation turned off. See, as you could tell, it, it, it opens up that shutter, that way it allows more, or it opens up that sensor, that way it allows more light into the camera and you lose some frames. So turning off low light compensation, you get that. Of course, it's gonna go darker. It's not allowing a lot of light into the lens. So this is kind of be focused more on, on the frame rate. So next step, of course, which you can do these in any step technically, but definitely do them before you go live. Then you turn on your face cam. Now you have a lot of separation and don't mind my gaming mirror <laughs> that I got going on here, but it allows some separation, it allows some depth into your webcam. And now this looks 1000 times better than it did before just plugging it in and going and having an overhead light, which you should never do. Don't ever have an overhead light, get some sort of color background because now I have some separation. The blue is hitting me on my left here. I got the warm light actually hitting me directly in front of my face, a little bit more off to the right. And now we have some depth to our camera, some separation. We have some uh, saturation. That way the colors pop a little bit more. That way you just get the most out of your webcam. And then now it looks like it's a more expensive webcam. I'm gonna be doing a bonus video as well, hopefully soon. Maybe today, I don't know. That way we could take your a, a step further from this because this isn't my normal webcam scene. Even though it looks great, but there's another step that I like to do as well that I could show you. But that is basically it. Now, taking your webcam from that uh, the base to this because a lot of people, they get excited, you plug it in, you're good to go, and you're done. Well, you need to just dive a little bit deeper. And that big caveat and the downsides to this is you would have to do this every single time before you went live. I don't know why OBS doesn't save these settings on its own. It doesn't. Maybe they could fix that some way, somehow. I don't know if it's the camera. Honestly, I just don't know. You would have to do this. That's the only downside is you would have to do these settings every single time you open up 
OBS or after you turn off your computer. I guess if you're just one of those people that likes to leave your computer on all the time, I don't. But that's pretty much it as far as over here on the streaming setup, guys. And I hope these, uh, I hope this video helped you guys out. If it did, please leave a like and uh, consider subscribing. That'll make your webcam pop a little bit better and get the most out of that $100 purchase. Now, if you're using a Bravia, you could take it a step further and you could actually use that 60 frames per second if your computer can handle it. But with, if this video was helping you, helped you guys out in any way, shape or form, please comment on any questions that you may have. I'll be more than happy to answer them for you. Also, do not do consider joining the Blue Raspberry Discord. I am very frequently there almost all the time. That way, you guys can ask me any questions there that I may have missed over here on YouTube. That's pretty much it. I mean, take these little settings here in the Logitech and take the, take the little bit of the advice that I gave you here, and uh, I think you will up your webcam game significantly thank you guys so much for watching i really appreciate you and i hope this video helped and if it did like i said please go ahead and smack that like button as well as consider subscribing thank you guys so much for joining and uh we'll see you in the next one throw your hands in the air let me hear you say yeah 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 throw your hands in the air throw your hands in the air yeah yeah yeah